This is Documentation Office Hours. It's the 10th of January, 2022. I'm in the, you, in the North America time zone, and it's the 11th of January, 2022 in India. So thanks, great to have everybody here. Topics on the agenda, uh, news, outstanding PRs, Google Summer of Code documentation projects, she Code Africa Contributhon. Let's see, no, am I on the wrong day? No, I got the right day. Okay, good. And no, you're then you're on one ten. You're on one ten. Yeah, and that's the right day. So, and then we could we could talk about right. the um, oh, okay. adopt a plugin. No, no, let's call it what it is now. Improve a improve improving a plugin, uh, post and site. And uh, Jesse Glick has given some feedback on it. So ah. That's that's encouraging. It was quite brief, but uh, so if we get to it, that's great. If we don't, there's still lots of work going on. Any other this? topics you'd like to put on the agenda? But I don't know that the order is right. I did not mean to put those outstanding PRs up at the top. Actually, I think we should put them at the top because okay. I think they may they they they're a good thing for us to look at. The others are are I'd call more general topics than, than okay. the specifics of that. So outstanding PRs sounds really great to me. Okay, so make sure we don't take too long and eat the whole meeting up. Okay, now one of the things we don't have today and I'm intentionally omitting it is intentionally omitted. Oh, let's put it in the news. That way I can explain why. Okay. Uh, weekly 2.329 is a I security was about release. That. Uh -huh. And LTS two dot tomorrow, and LTS two dot three nineteen dot two uh, is a security release tomorrow as well. No, is no, no. Sorry, Wednesday, wrong day. Mm -hmm. Security release Wednesday. Well, it's Tuesday in India, so. Yeah, exactly. So using the word tomorrow doesn't help anybody, right? Yeah. It's okay. So. So that will be January 12, 2022. And, and what that means is there is no, uh, no change log for, for the 2.329 release. Uh, or no, and, and that's because there are no changes in 2.329 compared to 2.328, except the security fixes. That's an intentional thing so that someone who's on the weekly doesn't have to worry about receiving a security release that has some other thing that regressed in it in addition to the security fix. So it's, it's intentionally done that way. Uh -huh. 319.2 is different. It has a few minor changes, minor backports from, and then it has security fixes. Any questions on either of those? Oh. Hi, Kristen. Thanks for joining, Kristen. Hey, how's it going? Great. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so those two. Now, I've got a new, a, a really quite a cool story to tell on preview environments. So, on thanks to Gavin Mogan, we've got the ability to see pull requests live. So for instance, here's the improve a plugin tutorial and blog post. And if I scroll down towards the bottom of this thing, there will be a view deployment button right there. Uh -huh. When I click view deployment button, it's going to say, oh, did you mean this? And the answer is yes, I do mean it. And there it is. This is a deployed copy of that pull request. So mm -hmm. when I click blog here, and no, no, blog, wrong one, documentation, developer guide, improve a plugin, the tutorial is right there. Ah. And there it is. So no more requiring that reviewers must go run their own copy in order to see how the thing looks. This is available, special thanks to Netlify, who is providing the hosting for these, and special, extra special thanks to Gavin Mogan, for his work creating this thing, it makes it much, much better because now I don't have to be a 
site developer in order to do a good job of code reviews. Ah. So, so if we take your, <clears throat> your pull request for plugin developers, right? We should see the same thing here that view deployment is, oh, well, maybe not. Maybe this one hasn't been rebuilt recently. Is there something you have to, you have to rebuild it? Um, well, it, to, it has to have a change, a recent change. Oh, go to the one that's in the list then the- um, Oh, or, good, yes, yes, that's a great excuse, this one. I've rebuilt that a few times in the last couple hours. Right, so let's go look at this one and see if it's got a view deployment button. Okay, now, deployment. Oh, it says this branch has not been deployed. Okay, I don't understand that one. I don't know why that wasn't deployed. Uh, we may have to ask separately. Oh, maybe some checks were not successful? Uh, yeah, but I don't think that that would stop. Oh, oh, okay. This one would, would no, that, should, that shouldn't be blocking it because this one was successful, right? This build was just fine. So I don't, oh, oh, December 29. That's why it's probably old enough that it hasn't been rebuilt. Uh-huh. That's a little surprising that it hasn't because I think you'd said you'd made recent changes to it, right? Wait a minute, are we at, which one are we in? No, I, I didn't was the, make changes to, to oh, okay. that one. Or Good. I, I made suggestions. Um, Got it. Go to the 4612. Oh, okay. Good. Let's see it then. And now if we jump down here. And nope, it also says not been deployed. Not sure. I'll have to explore further with Gavin why this one's not deployed. But okay. the, 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 the way it works, at least the one that I was dealing with, it worked really quite well and meant I didn't have to deploy it any longer. So I can fix my, my home website to not have that copy anymore. Ah, lovely. So, so special thanks to Gavin Mogan for his work on that. So ideally, this deployment option will be available for all the PR submitted to Jenkins I, right? Exactly, oh. right. With no extra work on our, that's what I glanced at it. I didn't see it until this afternoon. As I said, I tuned out. Um, and then I thought I was, I didn't feel like digging back to see if I had to do something to make it work, but it should just work. It's really great. Yeah, it is. I am, I am thrilled. That's that's all that I had on the news front. Um, oh, you should know. You should be aware. Google Summer of Code. We'll talk about it more later if time allows. Um, we've started. Uh, planning has started. We're looking for mentors. We're looking for people willing to help, etc. Uh, see the blog post uh, from Alyssa Tong and Jean-Marc Meeson. All right, next topic then, outstanding PRs. So Meg, um, you were saying this was, this one has some phrasing improvements? Right, just tiny ones. But other than that, it's approved by Daniel and I was thinking it might be something that should be out there because it's kind of an important change. Okay, so yeah, that makes, let's see how, how many more suggestions are there. Okay, so we're just, hang on, I'm gonna batch up your suggestions because okay. I think this is a good excuse for us to go through and yeah, I agree, that's a good change. Oh, we get an extra space in there. Ah, okay. Got oh, and it. a misspelling. Goodness. Okay. <laughs> Can we fix this? Uh, oh, ad admin. Oh, sure. Absolutely. There we go. Edit. We have the power. You're saying that. Um, are, the, right are there. there admin? And before in Jenkins, there's two spaces when there should be one. Ah, okay. All right. Too bad I didn't notice that earlier. Jenkins. Okay. Administrators. Okay. All right, got it. Okay, so let's add that to the batch. 
Okay, add that. Uh, this one was more major, but much more concise. Okay. Okay, yep. It's not yet. Okay, good. So those changes look good. I'm going to go ahead and commit those changes. It'll then need okay. some time to run through. Okay. And now this one, I'm not sure what, okay, it was approved by Tim already 12 days ago. Seems like it's perfectly reasonable to merge it as soon as it passes CI. That was what I was thinking that Good. Daniel okay. Beck wrote it. So yeah, it and shouldn't so be controversial. We'll, we'll come back to it in five or 10 minutes after the CI job has finished its validation and be able to merge it then. Great. Cool. Thanks, Meg. Thank you for catching that. Now you said that it may have merge conflicts with this one. Yeah, that's that big one that's been sitting oh, there. Oh, right. And and that's that's an okay one for it to have conflicts with. We we know when we have a restructuring thing like this, they're going to have conflicts. So right. if you if it gets conflicts, uh, I'm happy to help resolve those conflicts. My my concern um, the real concern is what would it take to get this thing merged? I know Daniel is just buried and no reason to expect him to get unburied. Yeah, although I think he's been into this already before, at least once or twice, right? Twice, right, right. So it may be that we just say, hey, it's, I liked Oleg's approach. Recently, Oleg used the approach of saying, hey, this is an improvement. Let's go ahead and merge it. It's, it's not, it may not, may somehow be imperfect, but it's still better than what we've already got. Well, that's what I'm thinking. And uh, most of what I added um, is stuff that I got from old notes from Daniel. Mm, so okay. the possibility that something could have changed over time is there, et cetera. Um, right. And, and so, but. but uh, yeah. So I think, I think let's, let's take this one as declare that we would like to, I think 4789 is, is more immediate. Let's get it in. And then if there are no conflicts, we'll consider, consider merging this. Merging 4612 later during the meeting, if time allows. Okay. And then, because then I got a bunch of little ones that can only be pulled out, you know, pulled out after 4612 goes. Right. Go, it'd be nice. Some of the, that's what I was just, I mean, there's stuff out there that's two years old and it's kind of absurd. Yes. Yes. I, I've still got the embarrassment metric. There is one pull request from three years ago. So mm -hmm. yeah, there, there's there's lots of embarrassment on those. Well, there, well, no, but there's well, what I saw, I don't, and I don't know. I mean, I know it's open source, but there are requests where changes have been requested months uh -huh. ago, and the writer never went back and responded to those. Ah, uh, okay. So they're holding, and I don't know what the, you know, part there's there's the ruthless bitch in me that would say, you have a couple of months to respond to this. And if you don't, somebody else is going to go in and rule on these. And Oh yeah. And, and we are welcome to do that. We are, okay. we are certainly welcome to bring, to take somebody else's initial and bring it forward, do some additional changes. Absolutely. Right. I, I do get the feeling that a lot of people think I wrote it once any further work is not my job. Right. Yep. It's the liberty of open source. I can leave at any time. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. Anything oh, else on? Long as I thought. Anything else on outstanding PRs, Meg? Oh, there, there were a couple more. I think you deleted them deliberately. I'm going to assume we'll just move on. Oh, oh no, I don't know. Did I? Okay, so you had inserted more aged PRs into the. Yeah, just a couple more. I just started looking, but I forget. But it doesn't. Well, let let's do any of these. Let's cause you to I... think. Oh, hey, let's look at that one. There was one where we got down to a conflict between Daniel and Martin D.A. about the crumbs. Look for crumbs. And I think it's on the first page. Oh, oh, right, right. I know this one. And this one is one where Martin is suggesting it, is proposing it. But Daniel's saying, uh, -uh I don't think we should be describing this because it's, it's, yeah, here it is. Yeah. 
helping somebody do something that we strongly discourage elsewhere. Now scroll down. I made a suggestion and Kirsten gave Kirsten gave me a head thumbs up here. It was in September, but yeah, I was like, some of these things are pretty old. <laughs> okay, yeah. so sometimes when I go back and review, I'm just kind of like, I don't really know if I should even look at this stuff again. But yeah, um, September is looking new in some of this stuff. Oh so. man! <laughs> but I, I mean, I think I don't think they're that far away. What Martin is saying is, this is a special case when you have to do this; you have no choice. Um, and I think Daniel needs to Daniel or Wadek or somebody needs to approve. But I think this wording is it, that it's been booted with Dash D. Jenkins. Yeah, see, since Daniel assigned it to himself, I, I'm, I'm hesitant to merge this one without resolving it. Uh, I, I like Martin a lot, but Daniel, for me, in these kind of conversations, wins. I, I want to sure. be sure that I understand what his... I have to say, it's like, I almost want to say, like, once a month, we'll have a meeting where we summon like where there's this, you know, Martin and Daniel must both attend and like, oh, okay. let's figure it out. Uh -huh. Let's see if we, you know, I, I agree. If they can't come to an agreement, I would go with Daniel too um, on almost anything. Um, now, Daniel and Oleg say gotten to, I don't know, in any event, but right. I think this would solve it. I think Martin is saying that there is a legitimate reason to do this and Daniel is right that we need to make sure that people understand that you should, this is not for the faint of heart. It's a very, you know, and I think a warning, I think a warning would do that. But who am yeah. I? I think, I think you've got a good point. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's kind of why I agree with you too. Cause it's like it, someone might need it and it would help them, but yeah, like we don't want to encourage. I, I think that if you put warning, it's not encouraging. Or at least like to me, if I saw something with a warning and all this stuff, I'd be like, oh, let's not do this. So yeah, <laughs> yeah so, but right. if you absolutely had to in order to unblock yourself. Right. Yeah. It would, if you have to do it, it's better to do it correctly. Right. Than to fidget around and try to figure it out on your own. Right. Okay. So am I seeing the entire diff here? No, there's more than that. I, uh, that yeah, that's just the change stuff. If you right click on files change, I think you see it all. Interesting. Okay. Hmm. That's weird that I'm not seeing more changes. Hmm. No, on this page you wouldn't right click on files changed. Okay. Oh, well, I, I can look at, I can go, I can go satisfy my curiosity about what GitHub showing me later. We don't okay. Know. Okay. So this, this looks like it's, yeah. So I really got to see that. What changed? Go to the tab where, oh no, that did. That didn't, which I thought so. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I, I think this is, um, yeah. There's much more text in the, when I read yeah, it. Much you're right, exactly. Okay. This is so, just, this just calls out the comments on the main page and everything else is over there. Got it. Okay. Uh, so resolving the conflict, resolving disagree, or, Concern from Daniel Beck. About the crumb phrasing being contrary to general guidance to best to preferred practices. Okay, got it. Yeah. Anything else on outstanding PRs, Meg? Ah, uh, nah, that's probably enough for now. There's a okay. Of, I should do some more prowling. All right. <laughs> okay, so in last week's Thursday um, office hours, there was a question about Google Summer of Code documentation projects related to documentation. And there are two project ideas right now that are related to documentation, but are in fact coding exercises. Right. One of them is the pipeline steps documentation generator that <laughs> <Try> has, <again. laughs> 
Sorry, Meg, go ahead. Oh, I said try it again. This was <laughs> right. our project last year, right? Well, it was it was not ex no one had, no one accepted it last or no one it was not accepted as a, a an adopted project ah. in in any of the years and so this is still yes. wide open. Right. Yeah, I, I think this is just making general improvements to the doc generator. I, I think it might be more. St I think we might actually probably need to go over some of this again and make sure it's still relevant. Or Mark, it might be good to also have like things that maybe you've seen added here to some of this background stuff because I think this has been like rolling for well this is what we did for she codes Africa. this is what we did for she codes Africa right no 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 this no. is oh this is, oh, this is uh, the actual software okay this is, right this yeah. is so the, the the examples highlighted here uh we went through them in the session read file here has some some clear weaknesses in terms yeah. of yeah. all right it's it, okay. it doesn't give you it doesn't give you any example it doesn't give you all sorts of things and then then there's the poster child the 62 page long documentation for <sighs> checkout yeah because of all uh, these uh, nested objects so like the thing is you do want to see these right like you do want to know what you can do the problem becomes yeah. it's just a lot like it, right, it, right. <laughs> so it's just they need, a, it's they need just, to be gr grouped or something yeah. Yeah, and then it's I think difficult to figure out where exactly you can get these from. Uh -huh. So, because what happened, like again, like it what when it, we're generating this, it's we pretty much are saying we have a Jenkins with every single possible plugin installed. So it's good because then you can see what you can do. But the problem becomes <laughs> it's just like which one did it get it from, and it's like you have to look it up. And yeah, it, I think there could there could definitely be things that are made easier to read, and then. Filling in the actual documentation steps, I think is, I don't know if that will really fit very well with the Google Summer of Code piece. Maybe we can say that, you know, you take a plugin and you use it as like an example, and then eventually that gets mm. added to the main repository as like how to better do it, you know, how to better, or we can add to the adopt a plugin um, right. Yeah. Tutorial as like how to maybe document your stuff better for being able to work with <laughs> things well, well, like or, this. Okay. But, how do you how do you get rid of the dollars class thing? Yeah. Right. Because notice there are some of these here that very nicely have a short word like mm -hmm. Accuref, and and they just did something that this other plugin here that's mm -hmm. very heavily used didn't hasn't done yet. Exactly. And so. Yeah telling people this is how you do that thing is already quite valuable. Yeah. Yeah. Because the, the, the parser is kind of, it, it's dumb. So it will take whatever it's being told. So yeah, mm -hmm. you're right. Like that, it, the file system has, a, must be telling it to be, it has used this it's, nice name. Yeah, it's got a symbol. Yeah. It's got a yeah. symbol for file system. Mm -hmm. And there's no reason we can't te teach people and encourage people, hey, you should actually use this. Mm -hmm. file this symbol thing because it, right. it makes the experience better for your users right right so i have a question regarding this page so i understand the problem here is it's a long page if we expand all of these options mm -hmm. so what is the expected outcome like like what how do we want to improve this how will it look like well so so there were two or three different alternatives offered and one of the parts of this project plan would be proposing which one you think is best to do. So for instance, um, logical partitions of the page, maybe one page for each checkout in this very special case, this checkout thing is, is sort of a one of a kind of mm -hmm. its, of its type. There's one other, there's one other step that is as bad as this yes. but only one other step yes uh, and i can't and that, remember which one it is right now. it's the build step i remember okay, it very okay good i was like ah, i want to say it's Chico build but i'm like i can't a thousand percent <laughs> yes yeah Vocals. so the build pipeline step is this one right here and you'll watch as it loads and loads and loads and it's just it's awe inspired because exactly the way Kristen described it it looks at every one of the 1800 Jenkins plugins. And if any of them contribute to this, this thing, it will put its documentation there, which is very powerful, mm -hmm. but also very large. Yes. <laughs> so separator, what a cool, what a cool build task separator, really, huh? 
So. <laughs> right. I was like, but there, unfortunately, you end up with that there's no extra information. So we're like, what is it separating? What, what, <laughs> yes. what, what, what does that mean? What does it mean? Right. And, yeah. and it's those kinds of things, right? Or run, mm-hmm. run. Well, that's a pretty generic yeah. name, run, huh? Right. And it's it's so good. Like, there's so many interesting things that, you know, we're going to be able to, or like, I think, you know, it empowers people to see stuff from pipeline, but it could, there could be some better stuff. And again, like we probably need to revisit the description because that description has been there even kind of in general has like, even the project proposal has been the same for right. a period Multiple of time. Years. Yeah. Absolutely. A period of time because <laughs> no one seems to be interested in it. Cause it's not as, I mean, it's not as flashy maybe as some of the other, like other project types. So I, I don't, yeah. Sometimes right. This this, this isn't do some new feature that uses exactly. AWS and Google Clo- Cloud and 42 REST APIs. This is right. improve the experience for people who are reading the documentation. Right. So, Diraj, did that answer your question? We, Kristen and Meg and I will go off on this thing for a long time if we're not yeah. careful. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. Like to logically partition the page so that we don't have all of them in one page, right? Right. Well, so and, what would be the logical and, description of stuff that's in the base and then well, show the others that came, which program it came from? I mean, what would yeah, just conceptually, so, what do we want? So for me, I would think I would think the checkout page and probably the build page would be split into N pages, right? Where, where one page per nested object here. And on that nested object page, it would have a include a link not just to the plugin that, so this link gets me to the, the plugin that provides checkout SCM, mm-hmm. but it would also be the link from, for the plugin that provides this symbol. So this link on the new page would be to check out SCM. This one would go to the AccuRev plugin, that kind of thing, Meg. Yeah. And, then, and then the documentation um, and probably should start expanded rather than opening collapsed. Here, if we start expanded, the page takes a very long time to load. Yeah. And Meg, your expertise would be ama- wonderful to have as a potential mentor, or at least mm-hmm. a technical resource. You can even say a technical resource. And it, mm-hmm. I know it's like maybe a technical resource as in, you know, being able to have good layout, good flow, think things exactly. readable. <laughs> yes. Right. <laughs> Don't worry about having to, you know, run anything. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out. Yeah, I'm still trying to see what I would like this to look like. I mean, because exactly. there's there's no difference between there's no way to tell what's the stuff that gets used a lot versus the stuff that's used in one corner case for one. Exactly. And well, quite frankly, and, I don't even know what they are anyway. Like from I wouldn't even know. Yeah. Well, that that's a you've got another angle there, Meg. That maybe we ought to have a way of connecting metrics or collecting metrics on the use of these of pieces of these pages. Right. Oh, well, that'd be cool. Because right now I, I, I know, actually I do have metrics on, on here. I'll show you the site that I have metrics on this site right here, this site, we have quite interesting metrics on what comes from its search engine. So that particular word that I just entered is, has been the number one search item for the last nine months or more. Mm-hmm. And the next one on the list is that search item. So get and pipeline. And so it makes a big deal for us to say, let's be sure that those things are well-documented. Mm. Yeah. So, but, but I don't, that kind of data may be available for these pages. I've just never seen it. Yeah. Okay. Be, is that something that would be hard to implement? Could that be something that we would want to add as part of the uh, store, or as part of the task for? Google I think Africa? I think it I think it very much could be done, and certainly Gavin Mogan is very familiar how to do it and how to use it well. So we've got people who know how to do that. Cool. Gavin uses the the search data here to guide his development of the plugin site. Awesome. Ah. So, so he ends something up, useful to have yeah. as well. Or like we can add that to the description just as like, oh, another thing to, or another thing to add to as a possible 
route or thing to do. Right. Well, and, and another thing to review is, okay, and this is rather painful and sometimes filled with um, expletives that shouldn't be used in normal civilized society, but here is, here is un, unfiltered feedback from readers who sometimes say in no uncertain terms how badly they, they dislike something or other. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, it can be very painful to read some of that stuff. Yes. Like, oh, wow. <laughs> I went through it and it's very uh, different. Like, people are very vocal about things. Right. Yeah, that's, that's a polite way to say it. I love it. Well done. <laughs> right. Vocal. It's not that they, they said things that their mother would have probably scolded them for if they detected them saying that publicly. Um, Girash, you're sounding, are you interested in this? Um, I'm not sure as of now, okay. uh, but maybe, but I need to understand like what's happening there. You said that uh, the document, the page, uh, which we showed the 62 long page. So it has those parameters which are coming from all the plugins, right? That's what you right. said. So that doesn't make sense to me as of now. So I need to understand how that thing works. So there's some some work needed from my side, then I'll be able to decide whether I'll be able to do this or whether it interests me or not. Because, well, the thought that I had is my mind's boggling, but as I read the, the details of the proposal, it's kind of saying there's a problem and it doesn't, mm. I, I wouldn't, if you gave me a very experienced programmer who's not familiar with this, I wouldn't know what to tell them to do. It's right, well, like, but, and, and that's, that's, that's the nature of most Google Summer of Code right. project ideas. Right. Is it's exactly. expected that the person submitting will, will submit a proposal of, I propose to do this. And in the, in the investigation stage, part of it is in the, even before the project is selected, it's do your research to decide what you'll do. Okay. Right. But for Diraj, I'm not sure that he's he's a, a, a terribly viable candidate. Diraj, you've almost finished university or have finished university, right? So this this would be competing yeah. with full time work for you. Right. Mm, yes. I guess I was thinking more just to fix the spec. Or... Oh, oh, I see oh. what you're saying. I'm, yeah, if you I have mean, any I'm other that... type of uh, and if you have any other comments or anything else, please like make them. You can uh, modify. There's a section of the website and stuff that have has all the Google Summer Code suggestions. Yeah. Like, feel free to right update it or ask questions or like you know yeah. ping on the documentation channel. Like, I would that would be great. It would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I actually talked. It's so funny. I talked to yeah. um, Alyssa last week. So it's about Nietzsche mentors. Like, oh man. Yeah. But so the other one I think that we need to cover, I don't know, Mark, if you were going to hit that, was the automatic specification generator. That's the other one that's documentation cool. related. Yeah. So the REST API doc generator is right here. And Kristen, you're an excellent one. I'm terribly weak on this one in terms of what I think this one's less well-defined than the earlier one for me, at least. I would right. have so to do I think what we need, I think that the gist of this is what we have for the pipeline steps we want for um, the rest endpoints. And then we mm -hmm. will publish it as a open API document or like a swagger doc. I think on the, I, I've thought like, I wasn't even the one that originally came with this, but it's like, I kind of adopted it because I kind of knew a little bit more about how this is working. Mm -hmm. But as they, but like, I think we want it published on the website and I don't know if we also want it somehow in, a, in Jenkins, but I think it might already be there. But I definitely don't think we want it on the website. So similar to how we have the pipeline steps, we want just basically what happens with the REST endpoints. So very similar. Um, there's a lot of libraries out there now that can do this type of parsing. It's again, like gathering everything all together and like passing it into the right mm -hmm. code and then figuring out how to get it hosted on the site. And if it's on the site, that is everything for the steps generator on my private machine, I can run that and get information about just the steps that are that go with plugins I've got installed, right? And I would need right. that for the REST and, API. And that we you've actually already got. Mm -hmm. So today, oh. today Jenkins locally will tell you your REST API endpoints and it gives some at least interesting okay. hints. I'm gonna try to call it documentation, but it gives some pretty good hints about this is how you interact with this thing. Okay. Right. So this is kind of taking it and using a standard 
Um, and there's like a ton of tools out there that can, you, we do not have to like the, the, put the UI in a, like put the standard in a beautiful format. So it's easy right. to read. So, so it's not, not like we would have to like, you know, completely write a new mm. UI for this. We just basically can use some tools out there that exist, but it's getting it into this format. And if we publish the specification um, in the open API format, um, other people can create, uh, they can basically import it and use it to create their own um, tooling based on what yeah. the specs is. So it's just oh. kind of a little bit more standard and out there. It makes it a little bit easier to interact with your Jenkins yeah. in a programmatic way. Right. Right. And, and so, so this is a, a great story for, hey, if you're interested in a coding project yes. in Jenkins that would be deeply loved. Yes and is related to documentation, this is the thing. It is very much coding, right? This yes, is not this correct. is not writing documentation in any in any sense of the writing that, that we do ourselves. This is right. code all the way end to end. I feel like we would as a document, I feel like we'd still be considered to be sponsored by the documentation sig as another mm -hmm. thing is figuring out Agreed. where we want to host it. Okay, cool, cool. I was like, we yeah. just still like we do it here because we want to <laughs> figure out where to put it and then like Yes, probably absolutely. some extra stuff in the repository about this is how to run it or like this is what it can be used for and you know that that type of situation. So. Right, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Is there is there anything that we could put out that would be a project for an actual tech writer? There is not because Google Summer of Code is not if designed code is not to bring writers in. Okay. There's Google Season of Docs that's for writers, okay. and 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 that's a, we've done one of those. We did one of those where Zenob was the writer we used, mm -hmm. and she did the writing on the Kubernetes install process okay. as part of Google Season of Docs. But for me right now, we've got more traction on Google Summer of Code, and I want to keep focus there. Yeah, just curious. That makes perfect mm -hmm. sense. Okay. Anything else oh. on the two Google Summer of Code? Oh, go ahead. Diraj, was that you? Yes. Yes. So you were suggesting me that it would be difficult for me to compete with other people, like because they are well, full time people, right? That that was what is what you were saying, right? No, no, I was more worried that because because Google Summer of Code assumes that you will give at least half time for the entire mm -hmm. summer. Uh, so you do mm -hmm. it, provide at least 20 hours a week, every week for a period of, I think it's 12 weeks. It's at least eight weeks. And, and mm -hmm. my guess was if you're working full-time for an employer, you probably mm -hmm. won't be available to also give 20 hours a week over the summer. Mm, that's true. Yep, that's true. That doesn't stop you from... from your... Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I also read somewhere that we can also extend the cross uh, length of the project, right? Uh, according to the discussion between me and the mentor. Oh, I wasn't aware of that. Okay, that's that would be that would be. I, I would have to read that to see. I is that a new thing this year? I think so. Kristen, oh. do you know about that? Yeah, I, th I feel like they added some stuff this year. Um, I haven't 100% caught up with the new direction are, but I know that they are trying to expand it beyond just people in school, university, or school, I guess, in general. Uh, but I don't know if they had, because I remember first season of Docs, there were like the two options where you had two different types of timelines. I didn't know if that was also being expanded here or what. Okay, so the program would no longer be solely focused on university students or recent grads. Okay, right. that's good. And now it's multiple. Okay, this is, all right, multiple sizes of projects. Oh, okay, that's kind of cool. Uh, now what does, okay, so this year we introduced medium-sized project. I know that there's ones that are supposed to be shorter. I think if you do not have the full period of time, it was like oh. a, but for, I think, non-traditional or like shorter seasons because of hmm. coronavirus expanded school length time. I have no idea. I don't know. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, maybe okay. it could also be the fact that it's, you don't hmm. have to do 20 
Yeah. So, okay. So here's the magic. So dear, as you were right, it says rather than a mandatory 12 week program, June to August, Mm -hmm. it can be mentors and GSOC contributors can decide if they want to extend the deadline for the project up to 22 weeks. Mm -hmm. I'm not entirely sure what that means in terms of calendar then. So they've granted flexibility, which means 22 weeks is well beyond the end of the summer or it will be on well beyond September or August and interesting. Does that mean they're expected to do 20 hours for 22 weeks or that that enables them to see, do say 10 hours a week? That, or... That's what I don't, I don't quite understand. It'll need more, need more research. So yeah. it, that's, a, that's a good question. And that might then allow someone who, okay, recent graduate has just taken a full-time position, still wants to do Google Summer of Code in their, in their non-working hours this might be the way to do it. Yeah. It might mean, I think, distributing the 350 hours in 22 weeks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and if that were the case, the math then says that's something between 10 and 20 hours a week. It's less than 20 and more than 10 hours a week. So that would be, that would be much lower impact on, on someone's personal schedule than the, the expectation of 20 hours in 12 weeks. Right. Mm, right and it's some employers actually to get a summer of code person in there would be a coup and they might like give you five hours a week to work on it or something yeah that that, that might be as well yes some would not obviously but yeah all right any other questions diraj okay no that answers my question thanks yeah. okay all right, so Shikot Africa Contributhon was the next topic on our agenda. Is that okay? Are you okay if we talk to that one, or do you want to take other topics in the 15 minutes we've got left? That one's good for me. They're all okay. interesting. All right, so well, we have so, two more right? this and the plugin one. Yeah, the, I'm not sure the plugin one needs, needs an awful lot of time for us, so that's. I, okay. I would be okay. The oh, I take it back. There was one other, but I'm not really ready for it, which is the end of year b- review blog post. Ah, um, I can show you a, a working prototype of it, but it's shamefully incomplete and needs several hours more work before I'm ready to submit it as a pull request. Uh, so next week. Well, I, I want to get it well, out this week, month. so I'll just oh, okay. I'll just invite you all to review it when I get it submitted as a pull request. Cool. Okay, cool. Uh, I'll be able to help because I'm comparatively free from this week. Oh, good. Very good. All right. Well, so then I'll ask for your review, uh, Diraj, because, yeah, it's. I've realized the Jenkins project did amazing things in 2021, and there's an awful lot to talk about. Yes. <laughs> As I look yeah. through all the things, it's like, Wow, uh, this this is really like ten or fifteen or twenty pages of descriptions of cool things we did. So you'll see it. All right. She okay with She Code Africa Contributhon then is the next topic. Sure. Okay, so so they've changed it. It's going to be rather than four weeks um, from in April, so April one to end of April, it's going to be or no, it was, what was it last year? I think we did March 1 to March 31. This year they do April 1 to May 15. And they're going to intentionally add a community bonding period. You following the pattern that Google Summer of Code does, where you have a startup period that is not focused on the coding for the project. Ah. Um, then the four weeks of coding and then a one or two week period where they ramp down and write their final report. Ah. So, so big plus there. That's, that's a really good one. Um, was discussing project ideas with Zenob in last Thursday's meeting, two that came to mind, inclusive naming. So getting rid of more uses of master, of slave, of blacklist, of whitelist, those kind of those kind of deprecated terminology that is still in in far too many places. Mm-hmm. Then we could reconsider possibly a refinement of last year's pipeline help project. Try it again. Uh, there were some problems there that it would need 
refinement and improvement to be sure that it didn't didn't have the same problems we had last, last year. We want to get new problems. Uh -huh. Any other suggestions you have of things you'd like to offer as, hey, project ideas we should consider, knowing that these are brand new contributors with at most a little bit of university or, or trade school experience, not, not, and certainly not experienced Jenkins users. And again, there, um, our pool does not include people who want to be tech writers, right? It does not. These are, okay. these are typically programmers, because, right? Yeah. Um, what about, um, test suites? Are our test suites? Um, yes. That's a, that's a good one. Yes. That's an interesting one. And a, a chance to, and, you know, to push this thing of the coding's not done. And I would, and testing to be testing for functionality as well as performance and security. Is that Okay, you just you just you just offered what I would call two uh, two out of the three of the things you offered. I would consider advanced topics needing somebody who's got prior I Jenkins agree. skill. Mm -hmm. But there, are, I think there are some things we could do in test automation that might be a good story. I've I've, for example, enjoyed having NetBeans generate stubs for me for objects that I then fill in the stubs. Mm. But the problem is there are all sorts of things hiding there in terms of many traps you can encounter and many sorts of problems of, oh, don't, don't call that, do call this, and lots of things to, to do that uh, I worry that it, it may, may require more skills than we can get them in four weeks. Right. Unless we, unless we had some very specific targets. And I'm, I'm drawing a blank. I'm thinking about in various discussions, we've seen a problem somewhere and we said there should be a test for that. And we all laugh, ha ha ha, wish, wish we'd log those. Oh, well, and, and certainly I've got, I've got lots of, I've got, I've got yeah. a very specific example. So the Git client plugin uses JUnit three tests. They need to be converted to JUnit four. Ah, that's actually uh, probably be a good thing to do. Are there any other plugins that have two unit three tests? Cause, oh, yes, absolutely. Because that feels like that could be something where a lot of people can help. Um, right. And as long as we get via, uh, I can imagine if it's a popular, a, a bigger plugin, it might be a, uh, oh, thank you for helping. <laughs> yes, yeah. we will help mentor this, but it, it's, it takes the time that they can focus on, you know, solving a technical issue versus spending right. time updating tests. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now it is it is somewhat of a mechanical transition, right? So it's not it's not a deeply deeply intellectual experience. But the flip side is, it's awfully easy to make mistakes and render a test that was useful in JUnit three non useful in JUnit four. Well, even if it's mechanical, if they don't have a whole lot of experience, it might even be worth seeing. This is what you test for. This is like, these are the paths you, this is what you have to think about. Um, right. This is okay. how to, how to correctly write the test in j for, and it, especially if you're saying that you can have something that was useful and make it unuseful. Here's what the difference between a useful test and a non-useful test is, you know, you know, from the perspective of, oh, you're just running over something, an auto-generated thing or something. It's like, no, you need to actually test the, this type of thought. And like, this I is like that. You, Cause they really, I mean, if they're not, if they're not experienced, four weeks of coding is not time to do anything very complicated. Right. And the, you know, we had to keep reminding ourselves the purpose of this is not to improve. Improving Jenkins is a nice sideline. The real point is to start educate these girls. And, right. And that would be, you know, testing being sort of the Achilles heel in DevOps right now. This would be right. a great thing to get them going on. And all the stuff that Kristen said, we can really. Yeah, so the, the good good yeah. insight. Let me let me do some quick research to see, sure. because it's an it's a an easily detected detected condition. J sure. unit three tests have a certain pattern. J unit four a very different pattern, and and it would be an easy thing to say. Look, here are this many. 
let's outline the project that would say these are the this is the conversion we need to do from this to this and it's relatively mechanical yeah so it would it's something they could that at which they could succeed mm -hmm. and That's it, it teaches <laughs> crucial skills in in test automation right they'll spend a lot of time in an ide a lot of time in a java debugger trying to decide okay is this doing what i expect etc all really good skills to develop yeah i'm liking this okay all right good good suggestion any other project ideas are there anything like any tutorial or i think we've updated most of the uh, startup guides right like because that's the other thing is like kind of going if we're trying to focus on some of the documentation stuff making sure that our all of our getting started tutorials are all like up to date. I think oh, actually, mostly you're okay there, right? No, um, there are there are quite yeah. a number of them that are well, there's one in particular that's really embarrassing. I just had a new person report to me at work, join the company, and sent them through a Jenkins tutorial. They said, Well, whoops, this is terrible, awful, no good, and very bad. Oh, no. Because it, it doesn't so so the the fix the fix the to fix multiple tutorials is is a really good idea absolutely right and it's, yes. if they're getting started like maybe it's the this is how you start to you know when you start to get software here's where you usually go and like figure it out or like what are pitfalls that you ran into when you were trying to get it started how it can maybe help somebody else and <laughs> yeah. right and Important. i'm thinking a lot of those may have um the the diverse terminology issues oh, yeah, and <laughs> outdated um outdated screenshots mm -hmm. because most of them were done before all of the ui changes last year ah that's actually that's a very good one that might be a separate activity screenshot because by then that timing is very good because screenshot updates <clears throat> might be because april is after the March release and the March release 2.33x.1 release will include significant UI updates. Ooh. Aha. Good timing. Okay, so screenshot updates is is a valid a valid thing for us to consider um, for at least for those cases where we have them. I don't know that we have an awful lot of images in the documentation, but there certainly are is some. Yeah, but it could be they just, and for them to just go through those, those tutorials should be appropriate for them to follow and right. sort of review it. And if you get <laughs> yeah. in trouble, fix it. Mm -hmm. um, right, yeah, so, and, and the, one that, the one that had the big problem, the big embarrassing one was this one. Oh. It, 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 and it's the first thing you see, and yet there are plenty of places where it is assuming a bunch of things that you you cannot assume are, are known to the, the person running the tutorial. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, it's so, so good, good point. Yeah, this would be fixed multiple tutorials might be a really good one. Yeah. And it, something is under our control. Right. It bugs me that these tutorials don't have more links to, you know, where you're we're doing something simple here. If you want to know everything you can do with this, go read the documentation. Right. Um, I like getting started guides that are sort of a gateway to the big picture rather than I just did something useful and I understand what I did, but how do I do something real? Um, right, right. Good, good point. Exactly. Because for people like me who are starting up and want to know about Jenkins, if there's a tutorial present or related to getting started so that is a really plus point for me like i can start up with things and as meg said it should be a gateway to the bigger picture so that's how it should be like a better easy part to you know chart in order to understand the product these might be really really useful yes good very good thank you i did not you are an an unexpected source of delightful extra ideas. Thank you very much. This is great. Mm -hmm. Now, one more thing that's on the list is as part of improving the experience for the participants, they're going to do general purpose 
knowledge sharing sessions with where they invite all participants to a session about this or that. So for instance, how do you use GitHub well? What's Markdown and how do you use it? What's ASCII doc? What does it mean to write a good bug report? Those kind of things. And, and so, and I think those are, those are all good things that we can point them and say, and some of those we can, we can help significantly. Right. Definitely. Excellent. All right. So we have run out of time. Are there other topics that we need to do in the last, in this last minute or are we set? Yep. Just one question. So mm -hmm. as you have, and all the other mentors, potential mentors have written on the topics on Alyssa's community dot post uh, on Jenkins IO. So my question is, if someone wants to know more about it, I think this is not the right time to know more about it, right? Because it's still in the process of getting compiled. The, actually, or, this is a great time to ask about it. So let's okay. go. Let's go find. Let's go find her post. And let's see where was it? It was here. We go. Google Summer of Code. So this is a perfect time to ask about it and to start conversations about any one of these things. Yeah. So would we be asking it during the GSOC office hours or what do you think? That's also a good time to do it. Absolutely. You could ask questions here in the community forum. You could also ask questions in during office hours. And we've got to get the office hours scheduled. Awesome. So that answers my question. I'll be asking if I have any doubt in this space, right? Yes. Yeah. This is a this is a great place. So what this is this is looking for is project right now. It's looking for project ideas, but it also in general has links that take you to the project idea pages where you could start questions and conversations. You know what? Actually, I've got an ingenious a devious, terribly devious idea here of how we do this to encourage conversation. Watch what I'm going to show you now. Okay. So, Diraj, this, is, <laughs> this, is, this is... When Mark wow. gets devious, it is fun. All right. So what we see here is this is a blog post, right? Mm -hmm. This right. blog post has a one-line entry in its definition, which takes it, it includes this discuss section at the bottom. And I can click this button to continue discussion. It takes me there. Well, I think we ought to do the same thing for these project ideas. So for instance, okay. this page at, its, at the bottom of the page, really, if we could find a way to do it, should have a link that takes it to the community site for discussion. Uh-huh. I like What do you it. think? I, I was going to ask you the same question. Like when you suggested me, like, click on that particular link of the project, then I was going to ask then where should I go next? Right. So and seen that at the end, we should have the discussion section, right? Right. And what this would give us is we could create a pay. We could, we, if we, if we put that discussion link at the bottom, when somebody clicks it, it will start. If it doesn't already exist, it would start a page that talks about this thing. Oh, it would start a topic. Oh, oh okay. So if we make a pay, uh, the community or Jenkins IO uh, space for each of these projects, then they would automatically be having the discuss button at the end of the page, right? No, that's that. I love your optimism. That's excellent optimism. No, we'd have to we have to be sure that it would work, and we would have to put a a one line entry at minimum, a one line oh. entry into these pages to show. Here, I'll I'll show you. Let's go to the improve this page. So this. This page here, there is a, it would get something like this where we would say, discuss true. Or it would be discuss, and then there would be some URL that goes to Jenkins.io or to community.jenkins.io. So that's how it would work. But that we would do once, somebody would make that change once, and then discussions just work. Oh, I think anyway. Really nice. awesome. Now the question is, we got to prove that, that I'm, I'm not just lying. <laughs> <laughs> but Oleg, when he added the, that facility for blog posts, I think we could follow the same pattern and do something similar for 
Google Summer of Code project ideas. That sounds great. Yes. Okay. Good. All right. Any anything else on on that topic or on any of the topics? Um, no. With the funding, are we going to? Last year, we ended up with more money than we had mentors. Are we going to be encouraging these companies that are willing to fund to fork over a couple of people to mentor? Yeah, yes, that's been that's been the most that's been the most blunt part of the whole exercise. Is Zinab and I both agreed that the crucial thing is yes, we absolutely need the money, right? She Code yeah. Africa has to be funded, right? If we don't have the money, then they can't right. they can't pay the women. But right. we've got to have mentors. Last year, they had over 100 applicants for what were ultimately 20 positions. In fact, I think they had over 150 applicants for 20 positions. Wow. Wow. So, so it's, and, and I understand, I mean, as an open source contributor, the time I give is, is precious, right? And I'm very mm -hmm. careful about it, but there's a piece of it where I need to put my money where my mouth is and actually agree that I'm going to help these underserved communities. Yeah. Well, the great thing is, at least there, it's showing that there is a huge desire. Right. So that 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 is that's to me also like a. So we can't you know, fund everybody, but I'm really happy to see that there's that that much interest and in something right. that was brand new last year. So yeah, and and last year was the inaugural awesome. year. Where that was year <laughs> right. one. Right. Like, that's it. Can hopefully like. We'll and we, but as I recall, the message was largely, "We need money." Yeah, that's what I remember and, too. <laughs> you know, and to and to, but to you know, add a little bit, you know, and we need, you know, we need mentors. Right, right. right. It was it, and, and it just the the fun part of that is it highlights that. Guess what? We don't always guess correctly as right. which is the going to be the biggest challenge in a project. Mm -hmm. I don't know why that ever happens. You know, I, I'm always perfect in every one of my guesses <laughs> about projects. I mean, I think the statistic. You know, you'd have to meet money, but that we had more than a hundred qualified applicants last right. year who could not be accepted because we did not have enough mentors. Right, and, and that's a great story to tell. Just to say, look, this this is why we need to be actively encouraging people to come mentor. Mm -hmm. Right. All right. Great. Okay. I Fabulous. think that's it then. Thank you. We'll meet again in, in one week. And I will certainly copy, I will re reference all of you in the pull request for the end of your blog post. Cool. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Right. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.